morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see a nice group here today. We have uh, a nice bread to Most of them are honoring in. Somebody with uh, Danielle. And Ruth. Stacy. And Ruth, that's right. Nice to see you. All right, you guys are good. <laughs> well, I know you have to do with uh, Christmas, but uh, hopefully you're still in the Christmas spirit. We've got a number of things we're going to uh, do a lot of uh, worship and, uh, and uh, praise and 
Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we want to give you thanks. We want to give you praise today. Lord, you are the light of the world who has stepped into the darkness of this age and, and delivered your light and life and salvation to all who believe. And we are grateful and we glorify your name today. And thank you, God, that we can come together and celebrate and to honor you and to worship you in this place. Lord, as your people are gathered here this morning, I pray that the name of Jesus would be high and exalted. And if there is even one person here who does not yet know Jesus as Savior and Lord of their lives, that today, this may be the day when they would turn to you and be saved. We pray this in Christ's name. Well, again, we are so honored. <laughs> we are we are honored that you are joining us today, uh, taking the time out of your holiday Christmas weekend and spending it here in the house of the Lord. Appreciate all who came on Friday night as well. We had a, had a very nice turnout and a, a beautiful service then, and uh, grateful for all who are participating uh, here today as well. So we want to just thank you. Thank you for being a part. Uh, uh, to me, there is there is nothing like gathering with the Church of God to to worship. Love that we can have the opportunity to do that. So, I want to thank you for being here. And uh, just a couple of things you'll want to note in your bulletin. Um, in terms of giving, we're going to talk about body moon in just a little bit. Uh, I'll just say this word of appreciation and thanks to all of you, though, for your faithful, ongoing support. Um, we, we do come out with uh, special offerings from time to time, and, and all you all y'all seem to rise to the occasion and give very generously. And, joyfully in those times, but it is your week in, week in, week out, monthly giving that enables us to continue doing what we do, ministering as we do here in this community, and uh, reaching into the uh, uttermost parts of the world through those gifts, cooperatively speaking, so just a word of thank you uh, for that. A couple weeks ago, we did approve the 2022 budget as well, and uh, look forward to see what God's going to do uh, in 2022. Um, of course, I have no crystal ball, and I'm sure neither of you do either. We thought 2021 might be better than 2020, and uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it was or not. Uh, it, was, it is what it is, you know, and who knows what the next year is going to bring, but, uh, but we are grateful that uh, God has called us together and appreciate your support in every way. Uh, also, I want to say a note of uh, this. Check the, um, the Christmas post office box over here on your way out by the office doors. Many of you have a stack of cards in there that, uh, you know, if, if you don't pick them up now, I mean, you've already missed Christmas Day, right? But uh, that's okay. You know, you can still take them. So go ahead and please take those cards. Otherwise, they just sit and, uh, and go to waste. But uh, make sure you check that today. If you will. And then, the final thing is, I have a ring that has been found. If you are missing a silver ring with a blue uh, stone on it, um, this is yours or if you know somebody that is. So... <laughs> anyway, we are, again, thankful for you being here. Um, I know many people bring in hurts and burdens, and, you know, Christmas is a wonderful time of celebration. Some call it the most wonderful time of the year. I hope that it is that for you, but I also know that we are living in such a broken and dark world that maybe it's not. You know, a lot of people do struggle with depression and uh, loneliness, and maybe this is the first Christmas season that you've experience without a loved one that uh, has always been there before, and, and so I know some things are hard, and we just want to acknowledge that uh, for all of you today, that wherever you're, wherever you're at, whatever you're dealing with this season, we do believe, and we know from the Word of God that Jesus not only is the light of the world, He is the hope of our salvation. He is Emmanuel, God with us, and that is something that we can take to heart this year. Um, also, I wanted to introduce and just to let everybody know for sure that uh, at our business meeting a couple of weeks ago, uh, we elected a new deacon uh, for the First Baptist Church. And so I should have said this last week, and I kind of meant to, and I've forgotten, but uh, we are thrilled to welcome Dean Sexton in as a newly elected deacon uh, of the First Baptist Church here. And uh, sometime, we've, we've got a date set in January, I can't remember what that date is, but we will have a coordination service for Dean. And uh, we'll uh, look forward to that. We'll get word out on that to everybody before long as well. But uh, pray for Dean. Pray for uh, his family and his wife, who is in Romania currently, uh, taking care of her mom and dad there for a short time before coming back. But uh, just wanted to uh, say a word of 
appreciation to Dean and his family for accepting that nomination. We, of course, we lost Sean, you know, at uh, uh, leaving. And, uh, are they going to make you a deacon down in Marion, or are you not seeing about that yet? I need to build a house. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like in your time. Hey, listen, our, you know, we, we mentioned just a lot of things. I, let me just give you a chance right now. If you've got uh, something you would like to share with the church, maybe a blessing that you would like to use as an encouragement, or maybe you've got a burden that uh, you would like to unload and, and let people pray alongside you today, I want to give you a chance to share uh, where God is working in your life and how we can be blessed or encouraged and, and how we can pray for you with that. Does anyone have something you'd like to share with the church family today? Take a moment to bow again in prayer. And I'm just going to give you here before I uh, pray corporately just a moment in silent prayer, just to take your hurts, your needs to the Lord, the one who uh, invites you to this throne of grace and promises that there you will receive mercy and find grace to help in your time of need. So let's just spend some time in. You are full of mercy and full of grace. And you are full of love. You invite us to cast all of our cares upon you because of how much you care for us. So Lord, I pray that uh, as we lift up these cares to you today, uh, Lord, that you will not only hear them as we know you will, but that you will come to our aid, come to our rescue, pour out your goodness and your love toward us here today. Father, we also rejoice in the... Uh, Praise reports that we have heard this morning, and uh, thank you so much even for uh, the 
salvation of Sue's brother. And Lord, we pray that you will continue to burden our hearts to keep on our knees praying for those who we know that do not yet know you as Savior and Lord. And Father, that we will not only pray, but we'll keep praying with faith and expectation that you will do a mighty and miraculous work, a work that only you can do so that you get the glory for it all. Lord, make our hearts burn with the desire to see the multitudes come to faith and salvation in Jesus. And Lord, just uh, reignite a passion in our own hearts for your honor, for your glory, that your name would be high and lifted up and exalted above all things. And Lord, as we come together in this time of worship today, may every song, may every word spoken, may every uh, inter interaction and conversation uh, and fellowship that we enjoy together all glorify your name building up your church, the body of Christ, and, and better equipping us to go out into this spiritually dark world and shine your light of salvation. We pray this in Jesus' name. guys, but if you're good at math, you might just realize that we are down. We tried to encourage Sean to, uh, to play with this, but he came up with the excuse of a broken finger and he couldn't do it. <laughs> Michael is out of town, so it's, it's four guys with guitars today, but uh, we hope that you'll Most of you probably know I've been leading the charge for reminding you about the lot of the Christmas offering that we uh, are 
church set the goal for and takes every year. And just because Christmas was yesterday does not mean that we're done collecting money. So you do have the next few weeks to uh, get your offering in. So if you're not, you've not missed the deadline. Not that we even have a deadline, I guess. But um, I just want to remind you again that every penny, every, every dollar that's given to the Lighting and Christmas offering goes directly to these missionaries who are on the field um, bringing the message of salvation and the knowledge of Jesus Christ to these countries that um, have never heard about Jesus. I think sometimes we fail to forget, even if we didn't grow up in the church or whatever, we've always heard about God and maybe who Jesus was, but in some of these countries that we go into in these nations, these people have never even heard the word. Uh, and we're freely allowed to gather and worship in our um, relationship with the Lord and bringing our families to church and in many of these countries they're not allowed to do that. They're doing it <clears throat> in their homes or in Sikhia. And some of these videos we've been showing are some of the South Asian nations where um, these missionaries feel the call of God to go into these countries where it's very difficult um, to be able to share that news. So we're going to see another video today and I encourage you again to be in prayer about how you can be a part of that um, by your giving. Um, and now I'd like to pray before we show the video. The Lord, we come to you this morning just uh, acknowledging what an awesome God you are uh, in our lives and in the world. And I just pray now that you will lift up these missionaries to devote their lives in this time to be able to go into these other countries and spread the word to people who have never heard about you. And I thank you that we have an opportunity to be a part of that. Uh, we may feel like in a small way, but when you combine what everyone's willing to give, whether it be $10, $50, $100, $1,000, um, that it's all going to be used for your glory and for your word uh, in the world today. It's in Jesus' name I pray. No video today. Oh. <laughs> Dang, it was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> when I first came, my body was capable for the task. There were so many different things that I had to die to and realize I had no power to do these things. I'm just asking God to do for them what I cannot do. Show yourself to your people. Show up. With my one-year-old firstborn. All of our kids come and minister together with us. 
Children open the door to build those relationships with the women, how to share their faith, how to reach out to their families, where it was much more close to the gospel. But there is a sacrifice involved. Witchcraft in this culture is what sustains their life. Who you marry, your health, whether or not you catch fish. Infant mortality rate is high. They live in fear of something happening to their children. When people come to Christ, for them it is a life and death decision. Is this worth my life? Adelina was a very well-known witch doctor. After about a year and a half, we're getting ready to pray. Adelina just says, I want to get rid of my witchcraft and take down the witch doctor hut. It's a Sunday afternoon after church. When that wall fell down, it was just a complete release to God. I no longer need to be afraid of these things. Our work in the local village is spread across the bay through the influence of a family member. <laughs> We're starting to see national leaders go out as missionaries through persecution, through hard times. God has galvanized their faith far beyond anything that I could teach. Be still and know that God. Adelina starts telling her story about how she has a new life in Christ.
you have enjoyed the music, the uh, excitement of Christmas, I think, is always <coughs> amplified by being wrapped up in music. Is this thing on, kid? You know? Okay. You know if I could hear myself well or not, but that's all right. Can you all hear me all right? Yep. Yep. Um, yep. Dave, what is that one? <laughs> Maybe. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I love to sing. I know not everybody's like a, you know, belted, uh, some of you are kind of a shower singer, maybe? Do we have any shower singers? <laughs> some that do not uh, sing out loud much, you know, when somebody's sitting next to you, but you, you let it go when you're at home by yourself, man. I, I'm giving you permission when we sing songs in church to let it go. It doesn't matter who's standing next to you, sitting next to you. You know, even if they give you like an odd look, like, I don't think you got that note. That's all right. Just go ahead. Rip it, you know, and... Uh, and that, well, as Lori likes to say, or Don, whoever came up with it, you know, wing it and sing it. Just boom, let it go. So I think God is honored and glorified when we sing our songs to him. And so many of these songs that we sing at Christmas in particular have to do with uh, talking about the fact that Jesus came to be our king. And if you just do your own little study in some of the, um, the hymn, you can even look at your hymn book. Just flip through some of the pages. We've sung songs already today about Jesus being the king. And so just for a few moments this morning, this will be kind of a condensed version, but I want to assure you that Jesus is the king of <coughs> the ages. And what does that mean for you? It means that you can trust him and that you can live in delight under his reign and rule in your life. So I'm going to start today in the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 1. We will kind of launch out from here. But we're going to pick this up in verse 12, and we'll read through verse 17. And Paul is writing this to Timothy, giving something of his own personal testimony. And, and this is what he says I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service. Though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving the full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And Father, we echo that prayer today, that word of praise to you, O oh God, be honored. To you, O oh God, be the glory and the power and the wisdom and the might forever and ever. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Well, some of you today might also want to take up a, a little argument with Paul and say, no, 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 no. You think you are the chief of sinners? You haven't seen my life. Anybody out there? You don't have to read <laughs> But I am telling you this, you know, sometimes when we come under the... Uh, realization of this holy and righteous God to whom we have to do, we recognize the uncleanliness of our own lives. Yet as Isaiah realized, Lord, I am unclean. My lips are unclean. I live among the people of unclean lips. And, and we can recognize very quickly if we are spiritually in tune with God that we are sinful people. We, we do stupid things. We say things that we oh, I wish I wouldn't have said that. We have attitudes and thoughts within our hearts that um, we know are not pleasing to the Lord, and, and sometimes we just get squirrely about life and, and things, and we, we miss the mark, and we might want to argue with Paul, no, you think you're the chief of sinners, but you ain't seen my life, Paul, I'm right there with you, but the good news is that Jesus Christ came into the world to do what? Save, to save sinners, he is the only one who has the authority, who has the power, the ability to save Sinners, And I've said it this way before, I'll, I'll keep saying it. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter how badly you think you have messed up along the way. It doesn't matter where you are. 
Jesus Christ can rescue you. He came from heaven to earth on a rescue mission to save you from your sin, to pull you out of that pit, off of that road that is leading to a place of destruction and eternal damnation and condemnation, a place called hell. Jesus came to save you from hell, which are the wages of our sin, and to save us to a new life where we can enjoy fellowship with God, reconciliation with God, where we can have the hope of eternity, where we will be with Him forever and ever in His presence. If Paul understood that, I'm telling you, you can understand that today as well. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. And then Paul, in, in this passage, then he just either breaks out into this, uh, what we call a doxology. A doxology is simply a proclamation of praise to God, as if he couldn't help it. Because when he thought about what Christ had done for him, he couldn't help but overflow and burst forth in this expression of his praise to the Lord. When Paul thought about the mercy of God, his overflowing grace, the faith and love that are found in Christ Jesus, when Paul thought about the calling that God had given him, appointing him to his service, uh, he, when he thought about his perfect patience, that Christ had shown toward him, he could not help himself but burst forth in this expression of praise. I'm wondering if we ought to uh, install one of those orange or, or yellow, uh, kind of like a traffic sign as we walk into the church building that says something like, look out, caution, unexpected, spontaneous, joyful expressions of praise are just about to be burst forth from the hearts and lips of the people of God who recognize what he has done for them. Man, does your heart just not overflow with praise, with gratitude, with joy for all that God has done for you? If it doesn't, then maybe you ought to check your spiritual condition just a little bit. If you can sit there and think, eh, you know, I can take it or leave it, this whole salvation thing, well then you're probably leaving it because it ought to excite our hearts. It ought to well up within us with just a, a, a joy that nothing else in this world can possibly give us. Paul understood that. And so what I want to do in just two minutes here this morning is uh, tell you a little bit about this king that Paul knew, a little bit about the king that you can know in your life as well. Can you go ahead and read this? It's like Paul says that he is the eternal king. He is the eternal king. He is a God of power. He is a God who rules sovereignly over the affairs of men and nations and angels. He is a God to whom all authority in heaven and on earth in this universe belongs to him. He is a self-existent God. He has always been. He always is. He always will be. Jesus, as I in, in Revelation, revealed as the, the one who was and who is and who is to come. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the eternal king, the king of the ages. He is the immortal king. He is incorruptible. He will never see decay. Uh, one commentator said it this way, the difference between God's eternality and immortality is that the first describes him as existing from untold ages past and into the limitless future. While the second describes his nature as incapable of ever experiencing corruption. He is immortal. He is invisible in terms that no one has ever seen God. But here's the good news, and here's what we celebrate at Christmas time. God the Son has revealed the glory of the invisible God. In the face of Christ, we see the face of God. God. He is the image of the invisible God. He is the radiance of the glory of God. When we see Jesus, we have seen the power of God on display. We have seen God face to face. And one day we will see him face to face. He is also the only God. There is no other one. There is no other way. He is the one, the only. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. The one and only, the one and only true God, the one and only true and living God is our God, revealed to us in the word, Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, our King. 
I'm telling you today, you can trust him. You can trust him to be faithful as the king. All right, but very quickly, let me give you three things that I want you to, to know here as well. So go ahead. And that. When we think about what Christ has done, and we celebrate this story, we are reminded that he is the eternal king of the ages who has arrived as the prophesied and promised king. Now, if you've been in Sunday school over the past few weeks, you've spent a lot of time looking at some of the prophecies of the Old Testament prophets, and then the revelation is fulfilled in the coming of Jesus. He was foretold, and now he is here. The psalmist in chapter 24 asked, who is the king of glory? The answer is found in Jesus. He is the king of glory. He is the one Isaiah pointed to as the, the one, the government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. And this is Jesus, prophesied, promised, arrived, on schedule, on time, just as God had said it would be. He's not all, only the one who has arrived as prophesied and promised, but he is also the one who reigns as the saving and conquering king. Now we see in the, in the scriptures, in some of the favorite traditional uh, stories surrounding Christmas too, of the tributes that were brought to Jesus. And you can't help but think of the uh, wise men, first and foremost. We call them wise men. The Bible uh, describes them as magi. I don't know what the right word is. They were of kind of a priestly line. Um, so the song, We Three Kings of Orient Are, might actually be better titled, We Undisclosed Number of Mystical, Priestly, Astrologically Adept Scholars of Eastern Geographic Region Are. <laughs> that doesn't quite flow in the song, really. Whether there were three, whether there were more, who, know, who knows? But they brought their gifts, attributing to Jesus, the King, the worship and the glory and the honor that was due his name. They came into Jerusalem, you remember, saying, where is he who has been born King of the Jews? They, they recognized. Somehow God put it within their hearts to recognize him, to want to seek after him. And they show us a great example of what it means to offer up treasures to him, to bow down and worship before him, and to honor him as the king that he is. So Jesus reigns as the saving and conquering king, because he has come to inaugurate his reign and his rule now, even as we wait for the consummation of all things that will eventually belong to him and his kingdom for all of eternity. Boy, the Bible gives a lot of uh, help for us to understand what that kingdom reign looks like. But it is not necessarily a, uh, right now anyway, a position of what we would consider <coughs> royalty and um, in all the earthly ways of thinking of that. But his kingdom is a kingdom of righteousness. It's a kingdom of peace. It is a kingdom of joy <coughs> in the Holy Spirit. And do you know that as subjects of that kingdom, for those who believe in Christ, we get the, the benefits of living out this abundant life. Life in the spirit that Jesus came to give to us. Of course, he's the conquering king because he has conquered sin and death and hell. In his victory on the cross, his victory at that empty tomb, he is the one who has shown that he and he alone has the authority to conquer death. I just, I'll say this. Do you know that as a, as a Christian, you don't have to be afraid of death? He came to eliminate those who were held in bondage by their fear of death. Because we know that there is a better future for us. This world is not all that there is. Now listen, we are called to live here. We've got a mission here. We've got a purpose. We, there's a lot to enjoy about this life. Uh, we, and we love you know, God's grace and his mercy toward us here. But there are better things yet to come. He has promised that to us. And we need to keep our eyes fixed on that eternal kingdom because that helps put things in perspective now. And that's why the Apostle Paul could also say all these light and momentary afflictions that we go through today 
are not going to look like anything in comparison with the eternal weight of glory. It's going to far surpass them all. And so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, because what is seen is temporary, but on what is unseen, because what is unseen is eternal. And in that eternal kingdom, we will live under the righteous and just and perfect rule and reign of Jesus forever and ever and ever. And it is going to be amazing. It is going to be more wonderful than anything you could possibly begin to imagine today. Somebody needs to hear that today because life is tough right now. Isn't it? There are things that you go through. And you know, we're, we've, we've got 2022 peeking around the corner at us right now. I don't know what's going to happen. You know, we still got this COVID thing hanging out there. And, you know, who knows? I may not be here this time next year. I'm not trying to be more, but I'm just saying life is uncertain. We don't know what's going to happen. <coughs> but we do know what will happen eventually. We will be in the presence of God as believers in him. He is the saving and conquering king. And thirdly, finally today, Jesus will return as the glorious and eternal king. One day, every eye will see him. He will come not as a baby in a manger. He will come with great power, great glory in the clouds. He will call to his angels to gather his elect from the four winds. And we will be caught up together with him to meet the Lord in the air. The trumpet is going to sound. Uh, it, it is going to be uh, an incredible sight, an amazing sight. He will come as the king in power and in gr great glory. And he will reign forever <coughs> and ever and ever. Are you ready for him to come? Are you ready for that day when there will be no more tears, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more hurt, no more betrayal, no more angst, no more of all the junk that we see in our world today. The darkness will be completely and eternally dispelled by the light of Christ. The government's here today. You know, we, we live under a good government uh, compared to the rest of the world. I am grateful that we live under the government we are in today, but this government today will have nothing compared with the gracious government of God for all of eternity. He is the king of the ages. Well, let me give you some things you can take home. How do you live as a subject in that kingdom? What does it mean for us to know that Jesus is the king? I've alluded to some of these already, but I'll just say this very quickly. I'll give you four things. I did not put this on the screen. You can jot it down if you want. Number one, bow in reverence. Just bow in reverence, in worship before him, acknowledging that he is the all-gracious king. He is worthy of our honor. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of all glory. That's what Paul was talking about there. To the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Number two, rejoice in his salvation. If Christ has saved you from your sin, rejoice in it. Thank him constantly for that. Live it out. Live in the joy of the salvation that he has intended to bring to you. This world cannot offer you that kind of joy, but Jesus does, and he gives it to you. Live as a child of the king with that joy. Number three, delight in his care, his protection, his provision for your needs. You know, our government today does provide, thankfully, some safety nets for those who you know, most need it. That's, that's a good thing. I'm, I'm glad that uh, they, our government cares. Not every government does that. There's a lot of places in this world you don't, you don't have any of those health protections. But I'm telling you this. In the kingdom of God, you have everything that you ever needed, everything that you could want, everything that is helpful, beneficial, good for you. You will have it, and you've got it even now. In Christ Jesus, you have him, the fullness of all things. So we need to live just with gratitude under his grace, his provision, his protection, his help that he promises to give us here and now and for all of eternity. And number four, submit gladly to his will. If he truly is the king of your heart, wouldn't you want to do what he asks you to do? commands you to do. And wouldn't you want to do it with joy, with delight, with gladness, and not just as a, an obligation or become a chore or drudgery in any way? If your obedience to God is out of like you know, 
kicking and screaming, you know, and dragging your feet and say, oh, I don't really want to, but God tells me I've got to do this, and so I, I guess I'll have to do it. You're doing it wrong. That's, that's not the way it should be. When Jesus says, I want you to go, we ought to say, Lord, here am I, send me. When he calls you to pray for somebody, it ought not to be a, a matter of, well, let me wait till I clear my schedule and if I get around to it, if I can find time. You get on your knees and you start praying for that person. When he asks you to go out of your way to show love and compassion and, and care and serving somebody in a need that they might have. You don't wait around for somebody else to do it. You go and do it. You show mercy just like the Savior showed mercy. When, when he calls you to a task, it ought to be the joy of our heart to say, Lord, here I am. I'm ready to serve. I will do what you want. And I'll do it with gladness. I'll do it with joy. That, that's what it's like to live in this kingdom of God. The, the, the one who is the king of the ages, who is the king even now. And it is our delight to be subjects of that king. We're going to close today with a final Christmas song. Maybe there's somebody here who does not understand what it means to be a child of the king because you've never trusted Jesus as Savior and Lord of your life. Today you can do just that. You can come to him in repentance and in faith, turning away from your sin, confessing that you are a sinner in need of a Savior, and you can find forgiveness in his name right now, simply by calling upon him to be Lord and Savior of your life. Father, I pray that you will move in the hearts of your people, even here and now. And for those who might be considering taking that step of faith, God, I pray that your spirit would convince them in an unmistakable way that Jesus is the one and only King, worthy of our praise, worthy of our adoration, worthy of surrendering our lives wholly and fully to his will. And friend, if that is you today, I want you to know that you can offer up a simple prayer just like this. God, I know that I have sinned against you, and I don't deserve your mercy and your grace, but I am coming humbly today and accepting this offer of forgiveness. Because I believe that you gave your life on the cross, and I believe that you rose on the third day in victory. And so I'm asking you to come to be my Savior, my Lord, my King, and help me to live in a way that honors you, pleases you, and glorifies your name. And friend, I am telling you, with the authority of the Word of God today, that God hears those sincere prayers answers, bringing you salvation. So Father, I thank you for what you are doing in our hearts and our lives today. Pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Would you stand as we speak? Christmas. God bless you into the new year.